Okay, so uh, I'd like to uh, the start the, uh, the today's uh, the, the special uh, the slot uh, and uh, explain about the ESPNet uh, tutorial. And uh, actually, uh, the I am an, the the original uh, the author uh, developer uh, of uh, this toolkit. But the, the fortunately or unfortunately, now we have a more than 100 contributors. So my original code is, is it is very difficult to actually find my original code now. <laughs> Many people actually depressed everywhere. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, I would like to explain about this uh, toolkit. And the, this is actually a couple of the collection of the documentations. And I try to put uh, that information uh, the uh, in some uh, the, the the timing so that people can have uh, some uh, people uh, lost in some presentation. Uh, you guys can also check some uh, the links and so on. Well, b basically, uh, I try to kind of make this tutorial to be consistent uh, and make it uh, the, the to the uh, the tutorial uh, the, to go through. A uh, couple of demonstration, and the uh, the make run the recipe uh, and so on. And I hope uh, that many of the uh, the people can uh, the, the follow uh, this uh, tutorial. And also uh, the some of the uh, project uh, in the course uh, that the, I think uh, it's a good. Uh, to uh, use the ESPNet since then, uh, that we can also uh, support you guys a lot. So uh, I would like to uh, recommend you guys to uh, use it. So uh, the, I try not to make it as a, like, uh, for example, presentation style, but more like uh, uh, try to kind of walk through uh, the, uh, the uh, tools and so on. So uh, if you guys want to know more about uh, there are some other uh, the aspect of this toolkit, like a history or whatever. I'm happy to uh, answer uh, in the question and the answering section and so on. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me start the uh, first part uh, of this uh, the, the tutorial. Actually, before moving to uh, the, the some of the details of the explanation, I actually prepared a couple of demonstration, uh, which actually we use uh, ESPNet uh, to do a couple of other fancy uh, cool demonstration. And then you guys can feel, you know, how this kind of toolkit has a potential. So this is uh, the, uh, the, we call it uh, models uh, the, in the ESPNet version. And we actually uh, the lot, put a lot of uh, pre-trained model. I think now uh, it could be more than 100 uh, the pre-trained models. And these are uh, the mostly speech recognition and the speech synthesis, but this also can uh, cover the other speech processing toolkit and I will a uh, to uh, speech processing application and I will explain it a bit more. And for this demonstration, particularly, we just need our, uh, the, the, to install the models from the PIP. Uh, that's it. But I think most of people here, if you want to do, use uh, ESPNet for your research, I think you guys need some full installation and so on. So that I will also explain it later. And the, um, actually, uh, the, now I prepare some demonstration, but recently the collaboration with, with Hugging Face, we also uh, the, prepare a couple of demonstrations through the Hugging, Hugging Face Hub. So you guys could also check uh, the, some of the demonstration in the hugging phase. So now uh, I think you, some of you may know that hugging phase only uh, the uh, they uh, the the uh, they, they not only they do not only providing the host of the models, they also providing a couple of the uh, API. So for example, I have never used this one, but the, the, this the Korean one, it's also having a uh, uh, the not only sharing the model here and we can download it, we also have a nice API to uh, the do some speech recognition and so on. The other example you can be, you can also find from a couple of other um, 
uh, example and so on. So uh, this is also another way to uh, the showing the example. Anyway, so let's uh, go through the first part uh, of the demonstration. First, as I mentioned, we just need to install the models through the pip install. And I think I already did it. So it can be quick. So this tutorial, probably we have this kind of a waiting time a lot. <laughs> By the way, how many people are played with it in advance? No one, <laughs> which is completely no problem, by the way. That's why you came here. And I guess someone already did it. Uh, that they feel that they don't have to come here or they have some uh, issue in the uh, schedule and they don't come here, which is uh, completely uh, no problem. OK, so the first installation is uh, the finished. Uh, in addition to the uh, ESPNet models, we installed a couple of uh, related required uh, toolkit. But again, this pip install is only for the inference version. If you want to do something, uh, for example, train the model and so on, you need to do a full installation, which I will explain it later. OK, so first part is the uh, speech recognition uh, demonstration. And uh, we prepared a couple of the uh, models but again, we have, a, you know, especially for the speech recognition, I think we have a more than 20 or 30 example of the models. So we can choose uh, the various model from the the uh, the, uh, the denodal or hugging phase uh, and so on. And for this uh, the, uh, tutorial, uh, to avoid uh, to uh, the have some uh, the failing demonstration due to my wrong pronunciation in English, I would like to just choose the Japanese. Ideally, sorry that you guys cannot understand what it is, but it is good in terms of, you know, uh, for me not to uh, the, the, uh, the provide the negative impression of the speech recognition. It's actually not easy problem uh, in this kind of a speech recognition uh, the, the demonstration. Uh, this room is a little bit uh, uh, the larger and having uh, some uh, the uh, reverberation. And actually, my computer is always uh, the, the, uh, the producing the fan noise, which is also an enemy uh, for the speech recognition demonstration. And uh, again, uh, the, in addition to do that, my English is not a native. So I apologize that I would like to use that in the Japanese one. Actually, we have a prepared English, Japanese, Spanish, uh, Mandarin. And this multilingual one is a bit crazy. Totally have uh, 52 languages. But <laughs> most of the language is not working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now I kind of uh, the set uh, Japanese as a model. And then uh, the next step is to just download a model from the Zenodo or hugging phase. This will also take time. So yeah, you guys see the bar, download the bar. Uh, this demonstration download a model from Zenodo, and it's, uh, that takes a bit of time. So by the way, if you guys make a very cool uh, research uh, the project and make a kind of a new model, uh, the, we are happy to ask you guys to also upload it to the Hugging Face Hub or Zenodo. And you guys are cool, uh, the speech position or other systems uh, can be a kind of this oh. kind of demonstration. So, OK, now uh, the. Uh, 
download and the model setup is finished. So the next uh, the, the is a kind of more like a demonstration, but it is offline. We just kind of uh, uh, the, the download the pre-recorded audio and then perform the uh, the speech recognition. It's actually uh, the recognizing uh, the first sentence already, second sentence, third sentence, and so on. So this is the audio. So this is the sec first one, not a uh, second one, not the first one. Uh, this one. Okay, and the recognition result is almost perfect, but there are some errors. Uh, I guess you guys cannot read the, the, the Japanese, so uh, just trust me. <laughs> and the next example. And this is the uh, ASR result. Uh, this is the, uh, the difference and this is the ASR result. And this is also, again, almost perfect. But there are some errors. For example, ASR, uh, we usually kind of remove the punctuation while reference uh, has that. So such kind of errors uh, happen. But this is not the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, mistake due to the uh, error of the system. And the last example. Actually, this is perfectly recognized. And then next will be the challenge. Uh, that I will do my uh, the ASR. Actually, this is perfectly recognized. <laughs> but someone, uh, the, I think only Shinjen know the Japanese here, uh, the Ian as well, by the way. But uh, uh, the, yeah, it is completely uh, the, uh, perfect, right? Yeah. ASR demonstration is risky. So I usually don't do it, especially when we have some sponsors and so on. But today with students, so I can make some excuse. OK, so uh, but this is more like, you know, uh, the uh, the one of the kind of demonstration. And again, you know, uh, if you guys build some cool ASR systems uh, the, the, through the ESPNet, you can also make this kind of demonstration and so on. Okay, the next is the, the, uh, the speech synthesis demonstration, which requires a couple of installation. So I will first do it. It takes one minute. Okay, while the, the, we are uh, the, uh, the installing the required tool for the TTS, uh, in this uh, the, uh, demonstration, uh, we have a couple of variations, but mostly English, Japanese, and Mandarin. Uh, which demonstration do, would you like to <laughs> listen? I guess English, right? Okay, I will then the, the play with the English version uh, of the, uh, the TTS demonstration. Okay, then I would like to select the English uh, demonstration. And the first, uh, similar to the uh, previous ASR demonstration, we will download a model.
think it may take time. So uh, during downloading, maybe I can talk about the um, a little bit uh, the, the the history uh, why ESPNet uh, include a speech synthesis. Actually, uh, the originally uh, we only have a speech recognition uh, 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 functions. But the, uh, there are kind of a two reasons that we decided to uh, include the speech synthesis. Uh, one is that the uh, main developer, one of our uh, main developers, uh, the expertise are TTS. This is one reason. A second reason is that, or oh, actually third, there are third reasons, uh, three reasons. Second reason is that uh, it turns out that it is quite easy once we have a, a sequence to sequence uh, the, the model, we can just switch the speech and the text, and then we can make a TTS, right? So it was actually turns out that, uh, that uh, t making a one tool to support TTS and uh, ASR is quite easy. So this is actually, I would say that this is one of the first toolkit that supporting the both ASR and the TTS training. Now this concept is quite similar, uh, quite popular, and many of the toolkit is actually supporting it. But the 2018 error, actually uh, the, the, there is no such kind of open source uh, toolkit about it. And before that, the, the 50 or 60 uh, years of the speech recognition uh, the, the, and the TTS history, uh, we saw that these two are completely different problem. And we usually don't have such kind of unified toolkit. So do I, I was speaking still, <laughs> it's downloading. Apologize that the downloading, it uh, takes time depending on the situation uh, of the server. So in the previously, it takes uh, the one to two minutes, but now I feel like it takes a little bit longer. Okay, download is finished. And then I think it's uh, the, 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 the process is almost finished. Okay, now I type to the, uh, the speech synthesis uh, example. Today, today it's ESPNet tutorial. Okay, very quickly, uh, the generate the audio. Today's ESPNet tutorial. Something like that. Do you want to type, uh, the, uh, want me to type some other? Uh, is there any other difficult one? Let's say, CMU campus. New campus. Okay, that's working. <laughs> Usually, this abbreviation is difficult. So that's why instead of I type ESP net, uh, the, I kind of uh, insert a space. Uh, maybe I can uh, write this. Probably it will not be uh, the well pronounced. S pet. Yeah, something like that. Okay, next demonstration is uh, speech enhancement. So, speech enhancement model is actually quite small. So uh, the download and so on is quite fast.
Okay, the preparation is finished. Now I will perform the speech enhancement. Yes, it's done quickly. This is an input uh, noisy speech. He said such products would be marketed by other companies with experience in that business. And this is just uh, the process uh, the, uh, right before my kind of uh, the other uh, field. He said such products would be marketed by other companies with experience in that business. Yeah, noise, noise is kind of well removed. Uh, next, uh, the um, example is the speech in, uh, speech separation. Now it becomes quite uh, the popular topic uh, in the speech community. Okay. Yes, it's already done. The United Some States undertook to defend Western Europe against Soviet attacks. Some Reagan administration officials are raising the alarm that the Fed... So two speakers are mixed, right? The United States undertook to defend Western Europe against Soviet attack. You could see there's some small interference, but it's almost perfect, right? And the rest of the speaker. And some critics, including high Reagan administration officials, are raising the alarm that the Fed's policy is too tight and could cause a recession next year. There's some interference in the beginning, but it seems to working well, right? So uh, the, these kind of uh, uh, all the kind of models, training, recipe, and so on are actually available uh, in our uh, the toolkit. So now I move to uh, the more uh, about uh, the how to use it to uh, entire speech recognition experiment. And uh, uh, again, uh, the, the ESPNet also has uh, other functions like uh, uh, the speech synthesis, speech enhancement, speech separation, uh, speech translation, speaker dialization, and so on. And all actually have a very similar style, very similar uh, recipe. So you guys can actually uh, the, the switch the recipe and you guys can actually uh, the, the learn, uh, train uh, the old experiment and so on. So the first, I would like to uh, the install a couple of required uh, the, uh, the software. So if you try to install it to your local machine, uh, you actually may need to follow this and install some of the tools. I haven't tried it in the Mac and so on, but it may require some of the tools. And probably some of them would not work. Uh, the, what is the latest Macs? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, they have a special uh, the CPU, right? A A1 or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I actually have never uh, the try the, the make made it successfully <laughs> installed in the, uh, the that uh, the, uh, the architecture, and uh, actually the other other uh, project uh, the, the uh, we also try to install uh, the ESPNet inference in the uh, Raspberry Pi, which also had some issues currently, but we are now trying to working on it. Mostly the not the ESPNet itself, but the other toolkit, like a SciPy, uh, HDF5, or whatever, which has some issue. OK, uh, after uh, this, uh, the installation is finished. Now uh, download uh, ESPNet source board. OK, that is finished. And then uh, next, uh, the I will uh, the install the Anaconda, uh, the there are a lot of options to use the Python, right? You guys can use the system, uh, the, the Python, or you guys can use a virtual M and making it by yourself. My recommendation is to make a virtual environment based on the uh, the, the Anaconda. It's actually Miniconda, yeah. Uh, this is because uh, the, the not only for the purely uh, due to the ESPNet, but due to the various toolkit uh, we need to install. And then the dependency becomes quite complicated. So, but the Miniconda is actually somehow uh, the, uh, make uh, this kind of a dependency to be clear. 
So the next, uh, the, the after we have a virtual environment and so on, we start to uh, the install uh, ESPNet the required tools. Actually, this part takes very long time, eight minutes, and uh, uh, the mostly uh, the PyTorch uh, installation. So during I am installing this one, I will uh, the explain a little bit about what kind of tools uh, should I uh, need to install uh, to make this kind of a demonstration. So first part, uh, the this is a very fast part that I kind of uh, the skip the explanation. But anyway, we need a, a couple of uh, tools uh, the, the, to install. And the most of the, uh, the uh, scientific uh, the computation of the Linux distribution may in include these kind of uh, files. But that, uh, for uh, the speech audio related uh, task, uh, please make sure to install uh, these two socks and uh, uh, deep a sound file, which is very important for us to manage various audio operations. And the deep sound file is important to read and out, uh, the, the write the sound file uh, there. How many people are the, uh, use, have ever used socks, by the way? I guess many of them, and some of them are not, right? Yeah, socks is a quite important toolkit for speech uh, the processing. So I uh, recommend you to uh, the, uh, use uh, this, uh, the socks. Uh, we, mostly we can actually replace it with FF, FFmpeg, by the way. So uh, the, I actually also use FFmpeg uh, so much. But socks is a quite uh, the, a useful tool to uh, the, uh, the reformat the audio, uh, the desample the audio, uh, the, and so on. So we actually usually using socks. Uh, inside our uh, the, the, the many processing. So please uh, remember to install it. By the way, this uh, the, the, uh, the installation, you know, what tools are uh, the, the required and so on, is always written in the documentation. So always I try to kind of put a link. So if you miss something, you guys can just check it. And the, the other part is, yes, the, I also skip this explanation. Uh, previously, I just, as I mentioned, but this is very important and often uh, many beginners actually ask this question, so I want to emphasize. Previously, I used a pip install to install the ESPNet model, to which also included the ESPNet source code and so on. However, again, to fully using the training uh, uh, data preparation, scoring and so on, we actually have to uh, the uh, the uh, you git Chrome uh, the ESPNet rather than just uh, using the pip install. So please uh, the, do not uh, the, use the pip install version of the ESPNet uh, if you want to uh, the train the model and so on. And these are also again written in the instruction part, installation part. But it is, some people actually may miss it. Again, mostly people just want to use it for the inference. So most people just pip install is fine. So our kind of documentation is also like that. For the most users, we just ask them to pip install it. But the people that want to do the research, uh, that we kind of having a such kind of special instruction uh, for the, uh, uh, the installation. And I guess we st are still uh, installing the uh, some of the tools in the PyTorch, I guess, right? Yes, okay, so I still have time. And the next part of the, 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 uh, the explanation I skip is the, uh, the uh, Anaconda, uh, Miniconda. Uh, this uh, en environment is our kind of a, uh, a recommendation. How many people uh, the, uh, use the Anaconda, uh, Miniconda environment? I think mostly, right? Yeah, it's safe, right? You guys don't have to fight with the, uh, the version conflict and so on, right? And the ESPNet actually including the uh, Miniconda installation and then the, the, uh, the making all the virtual, um, uh, the, there is an ESPNet directory and we make a Miniconda under this directory. 
So this means that the, you guys may use a Miniconda as your kind of, for example, the home tools and so on, right? But this will have some risk of conflicting or your own environment and the ESPNet environment. So just uh, instead of using the, your home environment, Miniconda to install one, you just follow this approaches and try to use the, uh, the, 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 the Miniconda uh, virtual environment uh, created under the ESPNet. And then you, you guys would not have a conflict uh, over your own environment and the ESPNet environment. By the way, I also use this kind of a structure often. And uh, if I, or for example, try to test uh, ESPNet with a different environment, again, instead of kind of sharing the, uh, the uh, virtual environment that I already created, which may be a kind of conflict, I will usually using the, another copy of the uh, the, the uh, virtual environment to avoid the uh, conflict uh, of the various uh, toolkit and so on. But it's good to know that everyone now is using Miniconda. So. It may still com uh, install something. OK, so uh, the, then uh, the, I will be back, uh, but the, the, I will bit, uh, the, the explain uh, the other toolkit. So first, we install the required toolkit, socks and so on. And then second, we download the source code of the ESPNet and go to the ESPNet directory and just kind of uh, uh, the install the Anaconda under the ESPNet. Again, these kind of uh, ways are already uh, written in the installation, and you can also follow this uh, notebook. You can actually do it. And then they now uh, the installing the ESPNet uh, and require the tools like a PyTorch and so on, which takes eight minutes. And this is not the end. <laughs> actually, we also need to install various toolkit uh, related to your uh, the, the, uh, research direction. For example, uh, one of the important toolkit is uh, NIST uh, SCTK toolkit for scoring. How many people know NIST uh, NIST? So this is actually the, uh, the uh, US government institute to standardize many things. Uh, atomic. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the clock is also standardized there. So they, their kind of work is uh, the, to standardize our activities, which is super important, right? And then the, the standardization is uh, the important when we evaluate something, right? And in the speech recognition cases, evaluation, we already have this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the lecture and the homework, but anyway, word error rate calculation and so on. This is actually quite important. And of course, the basic algorithm is just using a Levenstein distance, which is true. But there are some kind of small uh, the, the, uh, the change, uh, sometimes using some filtering, sometimes uh, dealing with the punctuation, sometimes dealing with the case, uh, the sensitive processing and so on. So we need some standardization. Uh, for the evaluation. And for speech recognition, luckily, NIST is involved and providing this kind of a, a, a toolkit. And actually, uh, the speech recognition edit distance is uh, one of the basic architecture uh, uh, algorithm. So some toolkit actually using their own uh, edit distance, which is completely no problem. But I'm uh, the, for the evaluation, I am quite conservative, safe side and try to use this uh, NIST SCTK as much as possible to avoid to have a different metric to uh, across uh, our kind of evaluation. For example, the Institute A using the different metric than Institute B, then we cannot compare it, right? So I actually try to use the this NIST SCTK toolkit as much as possible. So yeah, just I kind of mentioned <laughs> Uh, the, about uh, NIST SCTK toolkit, and then actually all the kind of uh, uh, the installation, required minimum installation seem to be finished. 
So I will check uh, the, uh, whether this toolkit is well correctly uh, installed or not. We actually have a couple of other uh, that, uh, the, the installation of the other toolkit uh, depending on their use. Again, a NIST SDK toolkit is one of the toolkit required for the speech recognition experiment. So this time I also uh, install it. It may not take so long time. And there are several other uh, toolkit like a CTC, uh, the transducer, uh, the language modeling, uh, and so on. Depending on your uh, the the, uh, the need, you can just install them. But it's a way mostly uh, the, in our recipe. If you need to install some of the toolkit here, uh, we just want them. So uh, the, you guys uh, the, do not have to uh, worry so much about which inst uh, the toolkit you install you install in advance. Once you uh, the, the execute some recipes. Uh, it usually kind of warns us, for example, you have to use, you have to install SCTK or you have to install uh, PyOpenJTalk or whatever. So given this instruction, you can, you guys can actually install it. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, the, I, the, we also prepare uh, the, the check install uh, with this kind of uh, the, the uh, tools. We can just check whether installation is uh, the, 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 uh, the successfully uh, done or not. And uh, there are a couple of toolkit, but mostly you just check Torch, Torch CUDA, uh, ESPNet if these are installed. Uh, the, the, uh, the X checkbox is uh, the marked, and then uh, it should be no problem. Uh, by the way, this this is a one important uh, the, the usage. Always activate our mini conda version of the Python. So we always uh, the have to use uh, this uh, the, the command and then uh, safely uh, we perform the, uh, the uh, Python command under uh, ESPNet uh, directory. So this, uh, the, the, this part is a little bit kind of uh, uh, the unique, but the, the, this, uh, the, the, how to say, spell, uh, the, the magic spell is important to make your uh, the, the tools to be uh, independent of other your installation in Python. Okay, now the installation is finished. So I would like to move to uh, execute other uh, recipe. And actually, uh, we have uh, so many recipe now. I think it's now 73 or 74 speech examples are uh, available. And the, today I will use this one, AN4, uh, the CMU, uh, the small speech uh, database. And this is uh, often used for the testing of our algorithm. Uh, it is very small, but it's good to use for the, our test. So I believe you guys will also try to use ESPNet and then want to test your, uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, the algorithm and so on. And then I recommend you to play with this one. However, this is too small to get some kind of meaningful result. So of course, sometimes you have to move to more kind of a, a, the realistic data, uh, depending on the agenda uh, of your project. Yeah, there are a lot of many kind of uh, the database, like uh, uh, this AI shell is quite famous, uh, the Mandarin uh, speech recognition task. And now the, the Chinese, uh, the, the, uh, the, the research community uh, is uh, the growing very rapidly. And uh, the, according to this kind of very uh, the, uh, rapid uh, growth, uh, this uh, the AI shell corpus, uh, the visibility is also quite in, uh, the, the important now. So if you guys uh, the want to show, write some paper and showing your algorithm in Mandarin, I think if you, uh, you guys can use this data. And there are several other uh, recipe and the show one. Uh, Chime4, which is actually one of the project I was involved in, which is a noisy uh, multi-speaker speech recognition uh, project. 
and such kind of uh, the different uh, the data than normal clean data recipe is also supported. I think I'm starting from 3 p.m. and uh, supposed to be finished in the 4, 4.30. 4.30. However, today is Friday, right? We also want to, you know, enjoy our life, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but, uh, me too. Uh, so, yeah. So today, the, please be relaxed. And uh, <laughs> this is just, you know, uh, the, the demonstration, the tutorial. So, and I also try to finish it on time. And I, I, I also want to have a bit more kind of a, a question and answering the time so that, you know, you guys can ask some questions about the ESPNet or some people also have uh, some, uh, the, actually, uh, the, the, yeah, from this week, many people are asking about the project and so on. So that would also be very welcome. Anyway, uh, I also want to explain a little bit about this recipe part because this is a kind of a core part of the uh, ESPNet. And uh, we recently also started to support spoken language understanding task. This is also very cool. Uh, speech recognition task uh, is uh, transcribing uh, what we are saying, right? Uh, the speech, uh, speech spoken language understanding task is if, for example, I say, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the Alexa play the music, and then the Alexa recognizes that this user wants to play the music or something like that. Uh, the not actually quite a related task, but uh, this directly related to the understanding, command, intention, and so on. So these kind of things are also supported recently. Yeah, I'm actually involved in many of the projects, so I, I may spend so long time if I just, you know, add a, don't have a time limitation. But I try to skip and try to explain the work that I am that are important for this work. Uh, okay, so this one, libre speech, is now standard speech recognition corpus, which is thousand hours of speech uh, the, the recording audiobook based one. And uh, this uh, benchmark is quite popular now. And the, uh, the yeah, it's a thousand hour. So it's maybe difficult for you guys to work on as a project or a small scale ex experiment. But if you guys uh, the want to uh, showing your kind of uh, the algorithm, new technique and so on, uh, showing this kind of performance in this uh, the library speech, uh, you guys will get a good visibility since this is the standard focus now. The next one, LJ speech, this is also very famous uh, TTS recipe, uh, TC, TTS uh, the database and the corresponding recipe and so on. So if you guys want to touch the TTS, you guys usually check uh, this uh, the recipe and so on. I think I would like to skip all the others uh, for now, unfortunately. By the way, this uh, recipe structure is not uh, from our original uh, the design. This uh, recipe structure highly we uh, the, uh, the, uh, the influenced and actually uh, the ported many of the, uh, the ideas, concepts, and so on from Caldi, Caldi Speech Recognition Toolkit. And the uh, Cardi Speech Recognition Toolkit, one of the great success is based on this kind of recipe. With this recipe, we can do all reproducible experiment uh, by ourselves. And we try to kind of follow this philosophy uh, as much as possible. So we actually try to follow some of the Cardi uh, the philosophy uh, as much as possible uh, for this uh, the toolkit. How many people have ever used Cowdy, by the way? Okay, good. Well, there are a couple of people, yes. And the, yeah, Cowdy and the, uh, the, also the, the ESPNet is kind of a, uh, the, uh, quite uh, the, the influenced by the design of the Cowdy. Uh, I would say it is not very easy for uh, the beginner to uh, the, the master uh, the many of the kind of uh, way of uh, using this toolkit. But this has a reason. 
again, we want to make this one to be reproducible. We want to make this kind of toolkit to be scalable so that uh, at least the trainer part, unfortunately, becomes a bit complicated. But the inference part, as you see, you know, just at, at the 10 lines of the code, we can do the speech question and so on, right? So inference part, we can make it simple. But the training part, to do the research, uh, to do many things, to do the scaling up our experiment, we unfortunately have to make some part uh, complicated. Okay, so now uh, the, I will uh, the move to today's uh, the main recipe, AN4 uh, the recipe. And this is uh, the, actually uh, the, uh, uh, the recorded by here. And uh, I actually exactly don't know, but probably Alan Black <laughs> recorded <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah, I think this is even before I started all the speech research. <laughs> That's my guess. Uh, <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, this uh, the, the corpus is one of the uh, one of the first uh, the open speech database, so we can easily use it. Now we have a couple of open databases like Libri Speech and so on, but before that we haven't. So this is a kind of very good for us to use it for various testing and so on. Okay, just uh, the first uh, the what we will do is to move the directory to EGS2, example. EGS means example. And then AN4, the name of the recipe. And this one also has a task ASR1. So we move to this directory. Some of the recipe actually also has a TTS uh, or other uh, uh, the tasks and so on. So in this case, if you go to AN4 and the TTS1, you will also find the same data, but used for the TTS and so on. And if we check the, uh, the contents of the directory, there are actually a lot of the, uh, the directory or uh, the command uh, and so on. And the, uh, the, the most important part is always we have this script called run.shell. This do everything. You don't have to run any other things. This pack all the kind of data preparation, data download, uh, the, uh, the, the format conversion, uh, training, inference, scoring, and so on. So uh, the, please uh, always check uh, this run.shell. And this run.shell is actually calling a couple of the config file here. So you guys could also check at this uh, the, the config file under this directory. And the others are used for uh, several uh, the, uh, the processing and so on. For example, script, Python script, steps, utils. These are actually symbolic link to uh, the point it to several set of the toolkit, uh, not toolkit, sorry, the, the, uh, the tools, and then do some kind of a, a, a data uh, dependent pre-processing and so on from here. And basically this random shell will call uh, this kind of tools. And there is another uh, the, uh, the important uh, directory which is local here. And this local directory has the information of their, of its own database. For example, uh, the AN4's format, libre speech format, uh, LJ speech format, very different, right? Uh, the people releasing the data with a various format. And we have to normalize everything to the same uh, data uh, directory and so on, right? To do that, we actually have to have some process for each of the recipe. These are actually under this uh, local. So usually, again, we prepare these kind of things uh, for each of the recipe in advance. But if you want to make a new recipe, for example, collecting a new YouTube uh, the audio data, and making some kind of new speech recognition task, which is great. 
And then uh, the, you actually have to you know, do some data pro processing and so on, right? These files are under this local directory. And one more thing, just making it you uh, complicated, but uh, the, there is the, uh, the, uh, the, the script called command.shell. This is mostly you guys ignore, but the people uh, want to scale this experiment. This is very important. This is, again, uh, the, it is not originally from uh, ESPNet. It's originally from Kaldi. This command.shell is designed to run the experiment uh, from your local machine to the cluster uh, by kind of changing the, some of the, uh, the command and so on. So this is actually very cool. Again, the, the, just changing some of the kind of a part of this command.shell to local, which is the, uh, the, the default. This program is running in the local machine, or if you use the AWS or whatever, uh, they, they actually uh, the run it through this uh, the, the login computer. However, you guys also have to use big cluster, right? SRAM or QSub or whatever, and using the, uh, the many of the CPUs, using the many of the GPUs, and uh, through the job scheduler to efficiently perform the lot of parallelization. This command dot shell actually can deal with uh, this kind of things. So uh, this part, I guess some people, most people here may be just using AWS and using a local machine, so you may not need it. But if you belong to some laboratory and that laboratory is having some kind of a SRAM system and so on, and then if you guys use this command dot shell, you guys very efficiently design, for example, to throw the hundreds of the CPU jobs when it is available for the feature extraction to the cluster. While uh, the, when you do the kind of training, we, you only need a two to three GPU, right? And then you just, for this specific part, you just using a GPU two or three or something like that. So this kind of manage of the computing is quite efficiently done. And these are written here, a bit complicated, but if you are very interested in this kind of scaling part, you guys also check it. But the scaling is a little bit kind of important for speech research. Again, uh, the, even the most, the one of the small and the famous uh, the uh, corpus is TIMIT, T-I-M-I-T, T -I -I and the Texas Instrument and MIT made this kind of recipe, which is 1980s. And this is actually a bit larger than this AN4 recipe. And it used to be used as a kind of standard, but now it becomes one of the smallest uh, standard speech database. Still, number of samples, number of frames would be the order of the million. So <laughs> you have to do some sort of the, uh, the uh, parallelization and so on. So parallelization, distributed computing uh, is quite important for speech recognition. Okay, uh, the, so uh, the, uh, now that uh, I checked the inside of the run.shell, which is again calling a many of the scripts, so it is not very kind of intuitive, but it's actually having a quite minimum information. What kind of language we will use? This is actually just to notify the model to label Nobel, uh, uh, the model as an English or whatever, we just using this one. And we just specify the training data. Uh, we just specify the validation data, which is used for monitoring the training. And actually, if we try to do the, uh, the, the speech condition experiment inference, we also specify uh, some of the test set here. This is, by the way, the name of the other uh, database uh, inside the AN4 corpus. And then do some kind of, specify some kind of config file and run it. Uh, basically, that's it. However, this uh, run.shell is calling this ASR.shell. So actually, the main body is this one. So run.shell is changing the configuration and so on, uh, depending on the corpus. So that's why we kind of making run.shell as more specific to each recipe, and the ASR.shell is common across all the speech recognition experiment. So we actually call this other uh, idea as template. <laughs> but template is realized in the bash, so it's a little bit unique. <laughs> How many people uh, that can uh, that, uh, that have ever used bash frequently 
some minimum uh, the, the, the operation, I think you guys do it, but uh, the, I guess not so much, right? Yeah, Bash is quite useful. Uh, this is kind of tightly integrated with the system and can do a lot of kind of computation efficiently. So uh, the, it's good time to uh, also uh, run the Bash. Okay, now I will move to explain about each of the step. Next one already. So the first part is a quite a data dependent part. In this recipe, we first download AN4 data. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, each database has their own format, right? We convert it to the common uh, the uh, format uh, used for the ESP net. So this uh, process is actually after downloading it, we also change the model format uh, the, to uh, what a ESP net can read. And again, this uh, data structure is also quite similar to Caudi. So now we have uh, uh, this, uh, the four types of data. One is a test data and the other is training. Usually this, this is enough, but for the neural network training, we also have to have a validation data, right? And then control the kind of a lot of optimization. So this actually uh, recipe, uh, this original training data would be split it into the uh, dev set for the training. Uh, it is called train and about dev. And the train no dev means that uh, uh, the subset of the training data subtracting the, the dev set. So we using this test data as a final uh, the evaluation and this train dev and train no dev during the training uh, and so on. And uh, let's check inside this uh, directory what kind of files are included. There are four files. But the, this uh, is mostly the information of the text information and the corresponding audio information, that's it. There are some speaker information, which is more like a legacy uh, style. We just follow a uh, Caldi based approaches. But actually our end-to-end -to -end system usually don't use speaker information at all. So this is just more like uh, uh, the compatibility uh, with the Caldi style uh, data format. And if we want to check more about uh, the, uh, the, what this text means, what this web.scp means, you can also check this other uh, link. The next is a speed perturbation. Uh, the one of the, uh, the biggest, uh, one of the most famous data augmentation techniques, but actually this recipe, we just skip it. And the third part is the, the formatting the audio data. Uh, this is actually quite important for GPU efficient uh, the computation. Uh, if we have a lot of kind of data uh, that flagged somewhere, and then the GPU computation is quite inefficient. Instead, we're just using the same format, in this case is flag, and then also uh, the packing it so that uh, it can be uh, the easily accessible in terms of the other uh, memory uh, the use. And then this is very important to make the, uh, the uh, speech recognition working uh, with a, a large amount of training data. So we actually dump to uh, the original data to such kind of a format. So if, for example, you want to use some data which has you know, 100 gigabytes of the audio file, uh, due to this dumping, you actually have to store additional 100 gigabytes uh, the space uh, to run uh, the, the uh, ESP net based speech recognition. But without that GPU, uh, uh, use of the GPU is quite inefficient. So we actually make this uh, step as a required step. Next step is also a little bit important. Um, speech data can be very long. Or can be very short, right? Uh, the, depending on what we will say, the sentence language can be changed. And uh, as you can imagine, too long sentences are very inefficient for GPU memory use. 
So we actually exclude that. Same, very small data is just kind of inefficient. So we just exclude this kind of data and so on. So there are a lot of such kind of a, a trick uh, makes the speech recognition work. But again, all of these, now I kind of, you know, uh, the uh, run it one by one. But if you just kind of uh, the, uh, the run, uh, execute run dot shell, uh, the, all of them are uh, the automatically done for everything. So if time to time, if you need to skip some process by yourself and so on, you can revisit this part and then you can check it and so on. The last part is to uh, the prepare the dictionary. But dictionary here does not mean that the, the, uh, the word and the corresponding pronunciation. Uh, this is just this thing, our vocabulary, and the corresponding uh, the ID, that's it. So for example, this process actually make a dictionary, but the, if we check the dictionary, it's actually this thing, the, uh, the character uh, used uh, in this uh, the setup, uh, that's it. And this actually line, the number of line corresponding to the ID. So we actually skip the ID information here, but this is more like to make our kind of a uh, the text information to be a discretized information for the computer. So that's it. And this process is actually in this particular experiment, uh, we using the character as a unit, but we can use word, we can use subword uh, depending on the situation. And actually in speech recognition and the machine translation as well, now that everyone is using subword, if we have enough amount of data. But since this AN4 data is small, so we just using the character. And there are a couple of other, some kind of a special symbol, which is uh, the used with the bracket. Uh, one is the blank symbol uh, that is used for the one of the speech recognition techniques called CTC. And the ANC symbol is used to deal with the unknown symbols appeared in the test set. And the, Start of sentence and end of sentence in ESPNet is actually using the both of them as a one symbol. And uh, uh, the, it can be separate symbol, but internally we actually using the same symbol. And the next step, this is, oh, by the way, this is the end of the all data preparation. Now we can do fancy neural network engineering, okay. But the, for the, uh, the language modeling part, we just skip it. This recipe actually including language model, but we just skip it. And then now I will explain about the end-to-end -end SR. What stage we need? I think just the two stage. One is correcting the statistics which can be included in the, uh, the main training data, uh, training process, but ESPNet actually making this separate. And what kind of statistics we uh, the compute? Just the mean and the variance of the input. Then we can uh, whiten the input data, right? Yeah, this is more like, you know, a very typical uh, machine learning problem. Yes. Are features already extracted at this stage? The features? The, this feature is actually uh, the MSCC, no, Logmail Filter Bank. So they're extracted like, during the data production stage? It's actually on the fly. Good question, very good question. Every time in ESPNet2 actually has a couple of options. We can decompute feature extraction in the data preparation stage, or we can compute feature extraction on the fly. Every time we need that are some features, it can be done uh, during the kind of other program. And in this particular example, we're using this on the fly feature uh, extraction. So this uh, actually statistics part, a little bit uh, the, the computational overhead happens because we do the feature extraction here. And then later, we also do the feature extraction for the training stage twice. But uh, the, we make sure that this is completely same other uh, feature. 
used in the other uh, statistics accumulation and the other uh, training part. And in addition to get the statistics, uh, this is also kind of minor trick, but important. We also collect the statistics of the length of the data. Again, speech data, you know, we excluded a very extremely long data and extremely short data, but still data is changing. Uh, the, depending on the, of course, the way of we speaking and so on. So we collect uh, this kind of the language information, and then this is used to efficiently making a batch. Basically, if we, use, we have a same similar size of the training data, and then we make a batch, mini batch, based on the, such kind of information. And the, yeah, this is a little bit kind of a, a, the, the crazy. But the, the, actually, in the longer cases, we using a short uh, the, uh, uh, mini batch size. If the amount of training data, uh, this the training data length is in average very small, and then we use a kind of larger mini batch size to efficiently uh, use the uh, the GPU. So this is called dynamic batching, and we actually uh, implement a lot of such kind of dynamic batching technique as well. So to do that, it's good to also get such kind of information about it. Okay, now the final, not final, but the one of the main part is just do the training, right? This is actually, again, the one of just stage. So this is a kind of power of the end-to-end -end neural network. We just call end-to-end -end, uh, uh, neural network training part, uh, that's it. Uh, we don't uh, the use uh, the, any of the kind of uh, stage except for the previous uh, uh, the stati statistics accumulation stage. And now I think you guys are work, uh, learning about the, the HM-based system and so on, right? Fitch actually requires a lot of stage for the training. First, we get the k-means, and then uh, we get some kind of centroid, and then we do the GMM training. Uh, that is uh, for the GMM uh, the, the homework, right? And if we move to HMM, we also get the kind of initial alignment based on the uh, the uh, equal uh, the uniform uh, HMM uh, the, the uh, alignment, and then first get the statistics, and then I don't I didn't the, the explain it detail, but the data I, we will do the HMM clustering, and then after HMM clustering, uh, we do the alignment again, and then we actually increasing the mixture weight. And then we get the kind of Gaussian mixture model. And then we, do, we will do this kind of process again and again. <laughs> there are a lot of stages to uh, make the speech recognition work used to be. Oh, then the, after that, we will replace GMM part of DNN and so on. Yeah. But uh, the, these kind of older stages are now only one stage. And this, again, uh, this would take. 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, the, we just wait for the, uh, the training to be finished. No, you can do many things. So I strongly recommend you guys to always monitor what training is going. And here I kind of listing three uh, important files. Even the other toolkit you use, you should definitely always check uh, these kind of values. Uh, we, by the way, also supporting the tensor board. So I usually using a tensor board to check the monitor, but uh, to, to monitor the progress and so on. Uh, but this time I uh, just kind of uh, also the the other uh, uh, providing the, some of the uh, output files of the ESPNet so that. Uh, you guys can uh, the, the, uh, find uh, some of the, uh, the uh, intermediate representation uh, based on ESPNet. So I listed here, but the, uh, of course, uh, the, what we have to do is ESPNet always kind of uh, uh, the, uh, showing the log file. So I recommend you guys to check the uh, the log file, which is you know quite messy, but the 
some error happens, always you guys should check the uh, log file. Almost all the steps, we try to kind of output the log file and uh, showing some error message that uh, the, the, some error happens in XX log file and so on. So uh, the, uh, the before asking your colleagues or instructor, uh, you you guys just follow this kind of uh, uh, the, the instruction and checking the log file at least. And then the usually uh, the, the error is quite uh, the, uh, the easily fixed uh, by checking such kind of errors. And uh, this is actually the step of uh, the each mini batch to output the result of the loss, uh, the, the validation accuracy, and the computational uh, cost, and so on. This is a little bit, how to say, too much information for you guys. Uh, but uh, this is a kind of, a, how to say, uh, the sufficient information for you guys to check what's happening. But again, this is a little bit too much. So instead, I also recommend you to check a couple of the image files. And the most important, uh, uh, the two of them are quite important, loss file. Yeah, currently the training is goes around 10 epoch. And then uh, the blue is the training loss and the orange is uh, the validation loss. So both are uh, decreased, similar trend, right? This is the kind of a good pattern uh, of the loss curve. And as you could see that if this uh, loss of the variation is getting worse in some timing, this would be the overtraining. And the, uh, the, this happens to the, uh, the both uh, the curves, but anyway, training or loss or the variation, uh, either or both of them didn't decrease then there would be some mistake uh, in your uh, the, the, uh, setup. One possibility is that the modelability would not be enough, which is under training. But uh, this can be another issue and so on. So this uh, the, is quite uh, the uh, uh, quite uh, the, the informative uh, if uh, we check uh, this kind of uh, the uh, loss file and so on. And fortunately, uh, speech recognition is not the regression problem, but the more like uh, the classification problem. So I actually uh, the often check accuracy than uh, loss because loss is sometimes difficult to interpret uh, with this kind of uh, uh, the absolute value. So yeah, that information is basically similar uh, same, but if you check this uh, the curve, uh, you can see that training seems to be going uh, the well, right? And currently, uh, the 14 uh, epochs. I think this computation, uh, the, it takes 20 to 30 seconds per epoch, and the maximum epoch is 40. So it's still the beginning of the training stage. So uh, the, this is the uh, um, the current uh, the the, the uh, latest model, which is seventeen epoch. So just the the, the little bit half uh, of the training. So. And uh, I already spend most of the time for the uh, this uh, tutorial. So before, uh, probably I will go through the rest of the part. And if the training part will be finished, I may also explain it. But otherwise, I will try to finish it on time. So during training is working, we cannot do the next process. But after training is done, what we can do is inference. 
right? So inference is also uh, the, the prepared in the next stage and it takes 10 minutes. And after we get the recognition result, for the demonstration, it is fine uh, that we get the recognition result, that's it. But uh, to do research, to do uh, the, to uh, the make uh, the, uh, to evaluate our algorithm and so on, we have to score it, right? This scoring is also included in uh, the, uh, this uh, the final, one of the final stage. Given that uh, we can actually get the final uh, error rate and so on. And basically this is a kind of a process of all the, uh, the, uh, the ESPNet main uh, training part. However, uh, to do the research, of course, we want to change the data. We want to change the model architecture. We want to tune the performance and so on, right? And of course, uh, the one of the way, if you guys try to kind of implement completely new techniques, you guys have to uh, the, uh, check the inside of the net uh, the, the program and then uh, the modifying some existing architecture to the kind of new fancy architecture and so on. But some of the cases, or I would say most of the cases, what you guys could do is just to change the training configuration, right? Changing the, uh, the uh, optimizer related uh, options, changing the simple architecture, like uh, the changing the number of layers uh, from the, the seven to 10, changing the major architecture from a BLSTM to uh, the transformer and so on. These are mostly done by checking the configuration. And the most of the recipe, we actually prepare the BLSTM, LSTM based end to end ASR and the transformer based one. So this example is actually uh, the, the LSTM uh, based example, but the, the, if you change the configuration to the, uh, the, the, the transformer and so on, you guys can also uh, do the transformer based ASR. By the way, what, why I didn't choose, choose the transformer uh, in this uh, the tutorial is that it uh, requires more than 100 epochs. So it might take a little bit longer time. So that's why I decided to use the current one. And actually this configuration is also one of the kind of very core part of ESPNet. Uh, we also supporting uh, many of the, uh, the latest architecture like a conformer which is proposed by Google and the lightweight conv convolution, dynamic convolution SyncNet, and also the, the uh, pre-training uh, based approaches. You guys may have the name web 2 back 2 and so on. These are also supported. If you guys are using this kind of configuration, uh, you guys can also play with uh, this uh, web 2 back or Hubert based pre-training uh, approaches. Unfortunately, it is not provided this in under this AN4 recipe, but if you check the configuration file, of the other recipe, especially DBD speech and so on, there are a lot of examples. And then you can use it for your other uh, database and so on. And uh, this case is uh, how to change the configuration. You can directly edit it by using your editor and so on. This is also done by if the changes are not so much, for example, optimizer change, we need to tune it but we don't want to prepare a lot of kind of uh, config files uh, depending on the, uh, the, uh, your, uh, the, the, uh, the hyper parameters. And then the, we actually can easily do it by passing this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the command line argument uh, to the uh, lambda shell. And then it can actually easily change the weight and so on. And the last part is that again, some people may want to make a new recipe, new database, a new application and so on. This would be, I am expecting uh, that a lot of people will do. And then I, uh, the, the, there is a kind of a, a documentation here, which is uh, the, the, uh, the explaining about how to prepare a new recipe uh, and so on in ESPNet. 
So I will skip this part, but uh, I also recommend you guys to check this part. And then uh, you guys can uh, make a, a new recipe and so on.